Ah, the lowly swamp cooler. Rusty water dripping off of it. Uh, minerals stuck all over the louvers. Looks like, what the heck is that silly thing? Well, that is a swamp cooler. Now, I don't have one here, so I'm going to be mostly just showing you pictures that I found on the internet of the different things. Uh, but I just wanted to talk a bit about these things. Uh, I have a little bit of history with them. Uh, I was uh, living in uh, the high desert of California. This was back in the 60s. And uh, everybody used them. Uh, they were on their roof. They were in their backyard, you know, going into a, you know, there would be a, a duct inside. Sometimes there was actual duct work that was devoted to the swamp cooler. Sometimes they just blew inside the house someplace in a hall or something. These things are actually really effective cooling devices. Now, this is just an overview of them. If people want me to go farther, I'll go farther on the service and the like. But in this time of high energy costs, the swamp cooler seems to make quite a bit of sense. Uh, you're looking at about a half horse, sometimes a three quarter horse motor, uh, compared to, uh, well, in the high desert, four or five uh, ton, four or five horsepower uh, in the uh, compressor. So, yeah, that's a big difference in uh, energy usage. Swamp coolers do have some advantages here that they they can do a job a cooling job in a low humidity area deserts mostly and cool a structure effectively where i'm living right now is eastern washington state uh throughout my career in the business i work mostly on swamp coolers on restaurants they use them for the, the kitchen. So they would cool the air coming into the kitchen, you know, directly above the stoves mostly. And they're pretty effective that way. Houses, some houses use them. Uh, I don't see them much anymore. They kind of faded away. Our cooling season isn't really long here anyway. So uh, they're not as common here as they would be down in the desert. And kind of an interesting little aside, when I left uh, the high desert, everything was swamp coolers, but they were changing over to refrigerated air. So there's kind of a change coming. I came back there and I visited about 15 years later and uh, the refrigerated air was gone. They all went back swamp coolers uh, because there was so much less uh, there was some, uh, they cost so much less to operate. So let's look at a, a little bit about these things. You know, this is just an overview. If, if someone wants to, uh, if some of you guys want me to get into service of these things, I can do that. But right now, I'm just talking about how they work and what they do. They take advantage of a certain uh, property of water. Water if evaporated, absorbs 900 and beat, 970 BTUs per pound as it evaporates. That's the highest latent heat of evaporation of any substance out there. There's nothing that's higher, and it's cheap. There's lots of water. Well, depends on where you live. But So to take advantage of that, you put... Uh, essentially a fan inside a box with some sides on it that the sides have uh, what they call excelsior. I mean, there's different things. There's kind of a cardboard stuff they use and so on. But excelsior is a, a natural product that uh, the water runs over it. There's little trays in the top of these things and water runs down over this stuff and it increases the surface area of the water that's exposed to air coming in. Okay, that'll evaporate the water, which is going to cool the air coming in. 
It's also going to add humidity to the air coming in, which is a, a con. It's, that's not the best thing. Um, when I would go inside the house that my parents had, humidity was immediately apparent. You go from five or 10% outside to, I don't know what it was inside, it was considerably higher, but you felt that humidity as soon as you came in. So that was one of the negatives of these things. But they would keep the temperature pretty much well below 80 up to about 100 degrees or maybe a little higher. But that depended an awful lot on whether you maintained them. I'll take a little example. My father was an HVAC man, just like me. Every weekend, he would go out, and this ours was actually mounted in the backyard uh, on the side of the house, and it actually had ductwork that went into all the rooms. Most of them weren't set up that way. They're on a roof or something. They just went into a hallway or something. But this one actually had ductwork. He would go out there. He would flush the water out of the bottom of the pan, spray down the outside of it and the inside of it, and make sure that it was as clean as it could be. Because the way these things work, there's a pump in the bottom, there's a water level in the bottom, and the pump brings the water up over the troughs, and it runs down over the Excelsior pads, and then it's recirculated. Well, uh, on some, they've, they've dealt with that problem. They, they have a flushing system that flushes it out occasionally, but the water would tend to get higher and higher in mineral content because just the water would evaporate off and the mineral content would stay. And so he would flush that out every weekend. And at the beginning of the cooling season, he would oil the motor and the blower and change the pads uh, because those pads, I mean, this was, the cooling season was well over six months there. Uh, and so this thing was running a lot. They usually just turn on and stay on, you know, until the sun goes down or quite a ways after the sun goes down sometimes when it's really hot. They were uh, on for quite a long time and those pads would just kind of fall apart after a while. And I, I can compare it to his next door neighbor, which is kind of funny because he said he had the same system we had, and I looked at his swamp cooler one time, and he hadn't serviced this thing in at least 10 years. The pads had just disappeared. They were all laying down in the bottom of the pan. He never serviced this thing at all. It was just a gross mess. And he would say, well, that thing isn't any good. It just doesn't cool. And so he bought refrigerated air. And at that time, we were still cheap in electricity. And I just kind of wonder <laughs> what he thought later on when the prices started going way up on electricity. These swamp coolers are, they're a, an option in places that have low humidity. Now you take this thing to Louisiana or Florida, you're just wasting your time. They're not gonna do anything because with high humidity, the water does not evaporate, or at least not very fast. In the low humidity areas, boy, it evaporates right off the bat. Uh, there is the issue of water usage with them, but it's never going to be as expensive or even close to as expensive as refrigerated air. And, you know, with maintenance, if you keep the motors oiled up and the fans oiled up, there's nothing there. It lasts until it rusts out, which it will rust out after a while. But, uh, but it's going to give you 20, 30 years with some maintenance, and it's going to work okay. So is this a good solution for someone rather than refrigerated air? Well, you do have to live with the higher humidity, and that may bother some people. But for a cooler, these things, they're pretty good, and they do work. Now, the little ones that you buy, I think I did a video on these little tiny ones that you can buy for 
15 bucks or something like that. They don't do anything. They're just a joke. They're too small. Uh, they're, they're not, they drop the temperature like three degrees across their little pad. So they, they don't do anything. That's, we're talking about the real ones, the big ones. Anyway, if you want any more on these things, uh, I'll see what I can do about coming up with servicing videos and stuff. But uh, the swamp cooler is, it's, uh, it's viable if you live in the right place. And that's it on this one.